Hi everyone, my name's Nate and I'm here from the WebView team and I'd like to talk about some modern WebView best practices or as I like to call it, using WebView like it's 2018 because it is. So before I dive into what's modern with WebView, let's talk a little bit about what's old. So WebView has been around since the very beginning. It was added back in API level one and it changed in a significant way starting with Lollipop. It became updatable, the implementation was. And this was great because it meant that users could benefit from security fixes and bug fixes. It would update every six weeks just like your browser. But a lot has changed since then too. We've added 40 new APIs just to make it easier to work with WebView to help developers. OK, but what's really changed? Well, when we look out at the ecosystem, it seems like apps are kind of using WebView the same way they've always used it. And you know, when you look at Stack Overflow, the answers are outdated at best. They certainly aren't best practices, and oftentimes they're just wrong. Uh, but some of the blame is on our shoulders, too. Our API docs are written like it's still API level one. And you know, everything has changed since then. So something that we did is we looked over the past year, and we looked out at the Android ecosystem, and we looked at the devices that are out there today. And what we found is that although we added, you know, for example, on Nougat, we added all these great APIs, a lot of apps can't really take advantage of them because they only run on the Nougat devices. And that's less than 50% of devices today. And it's been over two years since it came out. But what we also saw is that almost 90% of devices are running Lollipop, which means that they're taking WebView updates. And it means that this WebView implementation on the device actually implements all these new APIs. They just aren't exposed on older platform levels. So we thought, can we do better? So over the past year, we worked on our Android X library. We launched a new Android X library, and we're pretty excited about it. And the basic idea is that we're going to bring all these brand new developer APIs, but we're going to try to give you the device coverage you need. And we're going to support Lollipop and above. We're going to do this by leveraging WebView's update cycle. But we also spent a lot of time on this library to make sure it's really usable, that you can actually use these APIs to do productive things. So we designed them to be fairly straightforward to swap out from the Frameworks APIs. All right, so this all sounds fine, but how can we actually use this to make your apps better? So let's take an example. Since the very beginning of Android, we've given apps a lot of power to customize WebView's behavior. And in particular, we added a callback called should override URL loading. And the idea behind this callback is that you could choose to for certain navigations, you know, cancel these in the web view and dispatch them to a different app instead as an Android intent. So the example is you might have a YouTube URL, but that might be better suited in the YouTube app. And this sounds great. A lot of apps took advantage of this, actually. But there was a problem with the API. We didn't get it right the first time. The issue is that JavaScript can trigger navigations. And what we found is that there's some malicious JavaScript out in the wild which actually tries to exploit this app behavior. And from the user's perspective, they might be reading some web content, and all of a sudden, without necessarily their interaction, it starts opening up some new Android app that they're not trying to open. So we actually already fixed this issue. We fixed this back in Nougat, where the idea is we expose this notion of user gesture. Did the user actually trigger this navigation? And it actually works really, really well, but it only works on these NuGet and above devices. And these before NuGet devices are still vulnerable. So we thought this was a great candidate for our Android X library. The idea is we're going to expose this user gesture, but we're going to do it all the way back to Lollipop. And this means that you get this device coverage for all these devices, and you can provide this safe experience to your users. But we also made sure that this would be really easy for apps to override. There'd be no confusion. So I think we succeeded, but let's take a look at the code. So before NuGet, here's kind of what our code, what it, a lot of apps code might have looked like. We're overriding should override URL loading. We're setting a WebView client. And you know, in the body of this, we might be dispatching intents. And this is the insecure version of the API, but back in those days, this was the best we could do. 
some of the better apps out there in, when NuGet was released might have something like this. So you're overriding the old implementation from before. And this is for those before NuGet devices. But for the new devices, you have this new implementation. And we're checking user gesture, and we're not launching an intent if we, have the, if we don't have user gesture. So this seems great, but you know, it only runs on a small number of devices. Even today, only 50%. So here's how it looks with Android X. And the first thing I want to point out is that almost nothing changed on this slide. And I think that's really beautiful. It means all the code that you already wrote to handle you know, the old framework APIs, that code's all the same. The only difference here is that we're importing, we're importing our WebView client compat class from our Android X library. And we're setting this compat client. And the idea here is that when you're using the compat client, all these callbacks will get instead of only invoked on NuGet and above, they'll actually get invoked all the way back to Lollipop. So you're going to get the device coverage you need to provide your users a safer experience without really changing a whole lot of code. This is just one example of what we have to offer in Android X. So I'd really like to encourage you to go check it out and see how this can help you make your app better. You know, we're giving you the device coverage you need to actually use these APIs. But we're going to have a lot more APIs available. Some of these are going to be small improvements on classic APIs, like we've seen. But some are going to be for entirely new features, like safe browsing. And the best part is that this isn't some soon-to-be-released library. This is already out there. You can go home. You can add this into your apps. And it's ready to go. So you can try out our 1.0 release. Now I'd like to take a minute and shift gears a little bit. So we've kind of looked at the Android X APIs, and these seem great. They're going to give us new APIs with you know, pretty good device coverage, you know, almost 90%. But what about these APIs that have been around forever? They, you know, these have 100% device coverage, but some of them are kind of hard to use. Even I struggle to use them correctly, and I work on the team. So a common use case that we've seen is loading in-app content. And the idea here is that you want to display some content in your application, but you don't necessarily want to fetch it over the internet. You want to just compile it right into your app. But you also want to continue to build this content with web technology. You want to use HTML, JavaScript, CSS. And WebView has had pretty good support for this. In fact, we almost have too much support for this. We have so many APIs that it's hard to figure out which one is actually the right thing to use. And some of them have some weird gotchas that make them kind of hard to use. So I thought maybe we could take a look at some of these APIs and talk about you know, what's so tough about them and recommend some best practices. So you don't have to start from scratch with a new API, but you can kind of tweak how you're using these. So the, the first API we can look at is load data. And the basic idea here is that this is going to accept some HTML content. It accepts it as a string. And it's supposed to display this in the web view. But one of the gotchas is it doesn't really accept HTML content. It accepts encoded HTML content. The idea is you need to escape some special characters. You replace them with a percent sign and you know, a code following it. And we call this percent encoding. And this is the default configuration for the API. But there's actually no framework API to do the percent encoding for you. It's kind of an oversight. But the end result is that developers, what we've seen is that developers tend to actually do this percent encoding by hand themselves. And this is manual. It leads to bugs. And these bugs can have significant impacts for your application. You know, one small bug might seem OK today, but it might break in a future WebView update if you forget to encode a particular character. The other issue with load data is this thing called an opaque origin. So when your content gets loaded, it has what we call an opaque origin. And this means that it's going to fail all same origin checks in the web. And these same origin checks are actually critical to providing powerful web APIs securely. Without these same origin checks, you can't use great APIs like XML HTTP request. So what can we do with this API? Well, first off, we can actually escape some of these encoding-related problems. It turns out this API has always accepted 
an alternate encoding scheme called Base64. And this actually isn't that special of an encoding scheme. It's, it's just a different scheme. It's not necessarily better. But it's kind of nice because there's actually a framework API which will do the encoding for you. And it does it correctly. Great. So this base64.encode to string. This will take the content and spit out the right answer. And frankly, the only reason it's not documented is because this came out in API level 8, which today is ancient history, but was still in the future at the time of writing load data. But we can also take a look at these same origin restrictions. So the way we recommend to get around this is to use something called load data with base URL. And one of the nice things about this, I think of it as a feature, not a bug, is that it actually accepts content as is. You can actually give it content that's even totally unencoded. You don't even have to worry about the base64 stuff if you use this API. The other really nice thing about it is that it has this thing called a base URL. And although you're displaying this HTML content that you pass in as a string, the base URL kind of configures this origin that it operates with. So you can control which origin you get without disabling important security settings just to make APIs work. So how do we actually choose the right base URL? So this is something that even I struggle with when I try to use this API. I know it's the right thing, but I actually don't know what the right thing is to pass to it. So I actually thought, how about we go through some of the common use cases? So something that we've seen is that a lot of apps use cached content. You know, this is content that they may have downloaded from the web over the internet, but they're saving it for later. And now when they show it, uh, they need to show it with the right base URL. And the right URL to choose is just the original URL that it came from. This guarantees that you know, if it worked originally, it's going to have the same exact origin, and all the APIs are going to continue to work. The other use case that we've noticed is that apps tend to ship their own content and display it this way, which is great. Uh, what we recommend is that you choose a real internet-type URL, one of these HTTPS or HTTP URLs, and it should use your organization's real domain. And the reason for this is so that you can import other resources from your servers and use them in this content without worrying about any same origin checks. It'll all work. And then there's the question of, well, do we use HTTPS or HTTP? So here's a little rule of thumb. You know, we always want to encourage HTTPS. This is the secure protocol. But if you do need to show insecure sources, uh, insecure resources, we'd recommend that you use the HTTP scheme as opposed to disabling important security settings just to get your app working. And as a last point, I want to urge apps to avoid custom URL schemes. So this is something that we've noticed has cropped up. Apps will kind of make up their own scheme and use that. But the problem with this is that the web standards don't really expect custom URL schemes. So they're very vague about how to handle this. And it turns out that they wind up getting handled very inconsistently. And this can lead to surprising app breakage. So if you can stick to one of the internet URL schemes, you're going to have a much better time. So hopefully, I've kind of expressed that we really do care about developers at the WebView team. And we're trying very hard to make sure that you have powerful APIs that have the device coverage you need, while also paying attention to some of these old APIs and making sure that we explain how these need to be used, making sure that they're actually usable. If you have any questions, me and my colleagues will be around for the rest of today as well as tomorrow, and we'd be more than happy to talk to you about WebView usage and you know, what you need for your application. Thank you very much.